Okay, let's talk about governance. And we've talked about this uh, briefly, but uh, within Compound, uh, there's a decentralized governance mechanism. Uh, there's many different uh, parameters that the governance uh, controls. So the collateral factor that we talked about in, in detail, uh, the reserve factor, the base rate, the slope, the kink, all of these parameters can be fine-tuned by the governance. Okay, so uh, again, this is a decentralized governance and, uh, and, and the, the governance has the incentive to do things that are the best things for the actual uh, protocol. Uh, if they don't do that, then they will lose out to the competition. So uh, it's really important um, to realize that the governance can't steal funds uh, or block users. So you can't blacklist uh, anybody. This is open to, uh, to everybody. Uh, and the parameters that they can control are limited. So for example, a there's no parameter that says to divert the funds to uh, the governance um, because you know, people would never use a Compound if that was the, the case. Now, it's interesting that early on in Compound, uh, the governance was controlled by the developers. Um, and this, again, is kind of common in many tech startups uh, that uh, that the devs have a lot of control over the protocol because they anticipate that there could be some issues that need a uh, fine tuning. So this was definitely the case, but it was important that uh, the compound realized that this had to be a short term mechanism. So all along they planned to go completely uh, decentralized. And uh, it is completely uh, decentralized uh, today. So, so again, um, it's, it's important um, within the space of DeFi to avoid centralization, which could lead to arbitrary moves, uh, like the blocking of, of certain addresses and, and things like that. So, uh, the, the decentralization was, was uh, interesting um, in that uh, within their mechanism, um, there's a quorum rule, uh, a decentralized token, a governance token was created uh, called COMP. And, uh, and basically, majority of users uh, who hold a minimum threshold to make it uh, make it manageable um, are able to change uh, these uh, parameters. So um, Compound implemented their new decentralized governance in May of 2020 with the Comp token and uh, and implemented it uh, in June of 2020. The so-called seventh governance proposal. I mention this detail because it is important. Uh, it is a model of how decentralization actually happens. So what's very interesting is the comp token was distributed to the loyal users of the actual platform. So those that were, uh, that were supplying, those that were borrowing, uh, got uh, basically an airdrop of comp token uh, and the amount that they got uh, was basically based upon how much volume they were actually doing. So the early uh, users of this platform got a bonus in terms of the comp. So comp is very similar to Maker, the MKR token. Both of them are governance uh, tokens. So uh, this is interesting. It's analogous to uh, a tech company in kind of traditional uh, economics uh, giving away its own stock to the early users of the company's uh, goods or services. So very easily done uh, within 
this particular uh, protocol. It would be difficult to do this in a regular uh, economic system, but very easy to do within decentralized uh, finance. So that's not the end of the story. So the COMP token continues to be used to incentivize people to use the platform. So this is distributed to both suppliers and borrowers. And uh, for the borrowers, it acts as a subsidization of the loan. So the supplier is getting a supply uh, interest rate. And they will also get uh, a bonus in the comp token. So that will just increase the rate of return that they actually get. Indeed, some of these claims of very high rates of return for depositing uh, in DeFi protocols, well, it's not just the, the, the savings or the deposit rate that you're getting. You also have to factor in the value of the governance token that you're also receiving. And it's also the case that you've got uh, borrowers that the rate on borrowing is, is considerably reduced as a result of this subsidization. So uh, it's, it's interesting, this was done almost instantly. Uh, the comp, um, the governance token uh, had a market cap uh, of over $2 billion. Okay, so uh, this meant we had this very strange situation that some people that were borrowing, the amount of comp that they were getting as a bonus for actually participating in the protocol was sometimes greater than the cost of borrowing. So think about that. So again, this is hard to think about in a regular uh, system where you borrow money from the bank and you have to pay the bank, uh, let's say 10%, but then the bank pays you a bonus of 15%. So effectively the bank is paying you 5% uh, to borrow. Okay, so, so again, this is, uh, this is something that really incentivizes people to use uh, the actual uh, platform. So um, this is interesting. This protocol, it exists uh, within the Ethereum blockchain. This is not something that can be turned off. It might be that a better uh, platform arises. It might be that Compound actually offers something uh, that's better. But uh, this is a very important uh, mechanism uh, within this uh, space. And there's so many possibilities here. Um, I, uh, I talk about, uh, you know, I, in the previous course, I talked about a fair lottery. And this is exactly uh, a possibility using um, a protocol uh, like this. So the usual a lottery, 50% uh, at least is taken for overhead and for other purposes, you can easily create uh, something very powerful uh, within the system. So uh, let's finish off and do the usual uh, job that we do, looking at what Compound actually does to solve uh, problems. So again, centralized control, this is not decentralized. It is uh, something that is completely decentralized. Um, the, the rates that are paid both the supplier and borrowers are algorithmically uh, determined, and the parameters uh, are controlled by the governance token, the comp. Limited access, again, this is a common thing that uh, you need to do credit checks and some people are blocked. Um, this is open to anybody. Uh, inefficiency, well, we've got rates in traditional finance that are way too high for borrowing and savings rates, you've heard me say so many times, are way too low. And this actually pools everything together and determines the optimal uh, interest uh, payment. And that means the suppliers get a higher rate than traditional finance and uh, borrowers um, pay less. Uh, lack of interoperability, well, these positions within Compound are tokenized in themselves with the, uh, the C tokens. The, uh, the share uh, of the collateral is freely traded and can be used 
and other uh, protocols. So this is exactly what we're looking for in terms of interoperability. And, and just think about how impossible that is in traditional uh, finance. And opacity, well, everything in this protocol is transparent. So we know anybody can see the collateralization ratios. Uh, anybody can see the parameters that are actually being used. This is completely transparent and a very important idea within uh, the DeFi ecosystem.